Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to do a little painting of a photograph that I took when I was out kayaking the other day, and I'm going to be using um, some new to me paints. They are by White Knights, and I just kind of swatched them out. This is a little swatch sheet that comes with it, but I decided to move around my paints differently, so I swatched them out in the way that I like to use them. Um, I'll have a full review on those some other time, uh, probably in a week or two after I've had a chance to paint with them a little bit more and uh, form an opinion, but for right now I'm just going to paint them, paint this cute little um, scene, and I've got some just some artist masking tape here, and I am going to mask off a little stand of trees where I want the bark to be kind of light, so I'm just taking this tape and just tearing it lengthwise, and I've just tacked this down on um, on the uh, on my table with a couple little pieces of tape on the corners. I'm working on some Aqua B watercolor paper. It is 140 pound, 100% cotton. Um, nothing too fancy though. You can use whatever you have. I just want to get that little little stand of trees in there. Okay, and I think I might actually mask off a couple rock shapes because sometimes I find that if I mask them off, I get a much um, more random look. So you can just kind of tear your masking tape and I also get a nice flat uh, bottom when I do that. So I have a nice water line as long as I keep it horizontal to the edge of my paper. So if you've been having issues with um, with rocks, give that a try. That might, that might kind of break you out of that. Uh, that might kind of break you out of having, you know, two perfect rocks. You can always use any little bits of tape that you have, uh, that you've left, just tear it smaller for smaller rocks. Doesn't need to be perfect. The water line is really low, um, so actually all these rocks have like this um, kind of white mark on them from where the water line usually is, but we haven't had very much rain in Maine this year, so it's been kind of, um, so you can really see those, those marks. Okay, so that's all I really want to mask out right now. I just want to go over it with my fingers and make sure that my edges are, are pushed down well. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to start off just with a, uh, you can use whatever you like to use to, to wet your paper. Um, I'm just going to use this three quarter inch flat mimic faux Kalinske sable brush. I like the I like the faux Kalinskis um, for a couple of reasons, because animals weren't harmed in making them, they're a lot cheaper, and they really perform well. Let's put my paper here. Now, what I'm going to do is actually, this little, um, this little palette comes with my trace. You actually have a couple mixing areas here. I'm going to pop that right back on, and you'll be able to see my mixing area while we're painting. I'm going to start off with... Um, ultramarine blue, and I'm going to put some of that up in the sky area. The, most of this isn't going to show, it's just going to be so that we don't have a super, super bright white. I just want to kind of tone the paper there, and I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, under the rocks, because they're going to have kind of a gray reflection, and so will those... Uh, those trees, so I just want to get that in there. I'm going to grab some Russian green. It looks an awful lot like sap green. Oops, that's not the right color. And I think I'm going to add some yellow ochre to that. And this is a new palette. I haven't like, I haven't wiped it down with a magic eraser or anything, so, um, so the paint's probably going to beat up on it. That's just kind of what happens with plastic palettes. I don't have a problem with plastic palettes. A lot of people are really against plastic palettes, but it doesn't bother me a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some of the colors that I know I'll be using in the scene. I'm going to want um, some nice warm yellow, cadmium yellow here. I'm just looking at my reference photo. I just want to make sure that I'm going to have this reasonably close to where my colors are going to be. I'm keeping my strokes horizontal um, because I want that kind of ripply effect in the water. I'm going to do like a little cad red or scarlet. Uh, throw some of that over here. I know I'm going to have some from that that focal point tree there is going to have some cadmium. 
and I can always go in and dance a little blue in here if I want to later um, so don't worry about that if you think that you know it's looking not not uh, woodsy enough I'm gonna go ahead again with that Russian green and I'm gonna tap in some tree shapes these are all gonna kind of feather out and that is fine. I want some going right off the top of the paper too. Just a little sketch here basically. Great excuse to play with your colors. I'm going to grab some yellow. Notice I'm still staying with this big brush. If you wanted to use a round brush, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I find just by twisting the um, twisting my brush I can get some interesting shapes and maybe I think I want kind of like an earthy um, brown in there I'm gonna go with some of this it's like an Indian red like it's got a lot of color but it's still really earthy and I can mix it with the green and get it to go darker get it to a really deep uh, foresty color some of that are around my trees to really make them pop. Right now, I mean, I'm looking at my reference photo, which I will put on my blog when I post this tutorial um, on my blog. It's usually a, a day or two after I put it on YouTube. Um, I will make sure to put that reference photo th there so you can print it off and look at it and um, and go from there. I grab some yellow ochre to get kind of that vegetation that's kind of dried off. You know, this time of year, stuff's just kind of to dry off so I'm gonna get some of that in there even though it's right next to the water it's still gonna dry off a bit I like how vibrant these colors are I've had the um, Yarka St. Petersburg paints in the past and I really like them uh, and they do seem very similar to these I've heard they're the same thing just marketed to, for different um, for different markets and that could be the case I'm gonna grab a little of that color into the reflections as well my paper's still wet I can drag some of that in there I want to switch to another brush kind of so softly pull some of that down I'm just using a uh, dagger striper on its edge and just pulling it down to get those reflections in there it's a very soft and easy way to do that and I didn't realize I had bought this one on clearance so I did have a smaller striper brush that I had forgotten about Okay, I'm going to go back in with that nice bright red and I'm going to go ahead and add some of that in here. The paper's still wet so it is fuzzing a bit and that is fine. And I think I'll do a little bit of yellow in there too. Maybe mix a little orange. Take that, uh, take those two colors, add them together. You get much more sophisticated colors when you mix them. Now some brushes have a, a beveled scraper on the edge and um, these Zen brushes do. So what I'm going to do is use these to pull out some more tree trunks. Now sometimes when you use them you're going to get a darker uh, trunk like I am there and sometimes you get a lighter trunk. It depends on the, the type of paper you're using and also how wide the um, the scrapers see when I have a wider scraper I get a lighter branch it's almost acts like a squeegee and then when I'm using a narrower one like the smaller scraper there I was getting a much darker because it was like scribing the paper so if you can use both you can get a nice variety and it also might have to do with the pigments that's on top um, as well. I do notice like a heavily sized paper. This paper isn't crazy sized. It doesn't have a ton of sizing in it. Um, I do notice that I get a much um, a much brighter, whiter color when I'm using it on a heavier sized paper. So what I'm going to do at this point is dry this and then um, we'll remove our masking and we'll start adding some glazes. 
You always want to wait until your paper's dry before you attempt to remove any tape because if you don't, you're going to end up tearing your paper. I didn't get this paint pushed down as well as I should have, and I can see I've got some wet paint under there, but it's not affecting pulling it off. I think it'll actually give me some nice definition on the outside of the trunk, so I'm not worried about that. It's coming off quite easily. And I'm going to remove my rocks here. And I will want to let those trees dry because I do like that, those hard edges. So I'm going to let those dry before I try to glaze over them. But I can go ahead and start working on the rocks. And that just helps us keep those random areas protected while we're painting. I'm going to go with a, I think this is a number six round. Yep. And I'm going to make a nice gray with colors I've already used. So I've got my ultramarine blue and I'm going to grab that kind of Indian red color on my palette. A little more blue in there. A nice cool gray there. And um, I want, I'd like to kind of keep those, those, the line that I told you about uh, on the rocks. So I'm going to kind of try to paint around that water line there. I really find these paints to be um, good quality. They have a lot of um, color payoff. You get a lot of beautiful color in there. I find differences between the colors, like I'm seeing the, um, some colors granulate more, like the Russian green granulates a lot more than um, than other colors, and that's kind of what I like. I don't like all my paints on la uh, in a paint line to be the same. I think when I see that, it makes me think that they're probably just synthetic dyes um, because they don't have the individual properties that the pigments would carry. So I like seeing that. I want to get that water line in there too on that one. Oh, you can also take a paper towel, scrunch it up, and and kind of dab it and get some interesting texture that way. This paper I'm using is also very inexpensive. It's um, it's uh, it came in a pack of 50 sheets, six by nine. That's the size I'm working, and it was like I think I paid like seventeen dollars for 50 sheets, which I think is a pretty good deal for. 100% cotton paper. And I don't think it's, I mean, it's not as heavily sized as some papers, but I don't find it to be, you know, I don't, my colors aren't feathering or anything. I don't find it to be a problem. Again, I'm gonna just add that texture there. I really like the way that looks. Try not to drop your paint, your, your brush on your on your paper if you can help it. There's a little helpful tip there. It's actually fairly smooth paper for a uh, for a cold press, I think. And then I'm gonna want some shadows in the water, so I'm just going to um, water that down. I think I'm gonna go back to that dagger that I was using earlier and um, dry it off so I get kind of like a dry brush and just kind of mess with the hairs there a little bit. Pick up some of that color and then I'm just going to drag some of that down. pulling it into the water and then I think I'll take that color and also just kind of ripple it a little bit, add some streaks that way. Getting used to using these, uh, these, these types of brushes, I think they, uh, I think they can do some really cool things with, for like plain air because you're not so fussy with them. Not great for mixing colors because they're such a floppy brush, so you definitely want to go back in if you want to make more of a color and mix that with your, um, like a regular brush. Because it's just too floppy. 
And then I'm going to go in and add some texture. Some of these rocks. And you'll have to, you know, you'll go through and you'll adjust your reflections as you need to. Your reflections are going to be much duller than what you have, um, than what you have for the uh, color of the actual object. So keep that in mind. These reflections are going to be so much duller. Duller in color. Okay. Now I do want to add, and I think because this is such a skinny, these are such skinny trees, I'm not going to try to uh, go into the flat brush. I'm just going to put some gray bits in here. Just kind of scribble on the paper. Let the uh, let it kind of catch some of the texture of the paper. Rinse the brush, then just kind of brush over it so that it distributes some of the pigment, but some of it stays where you've put it. And something that's really cool about the daggers is that um, you can do some really cool branches because it gives you that gnarly um, random look. So I can just kind of pull off some really natural looking branches. It's like, it's so, it's so effortless. And you could turn your brush and get a couple side-by-side uh, -side branches because you get those little, uh, you get the little hairs kind of on the edge that, that will allow you to do that. They'll, they'll split apart and then you get these fine lines. I also want to put some, um, kind of like some grasses growing, but I want those kind of dead colored grasses, so I've, I'm getting the yellow ochre and uh, some of the Russian green. Kind of looks like a, a hooker's, like a cross between a hooker's and a sap green. It's a very warm green. I have to double check the pigments on that because uh, the pigment that they use up for that, it might not be the most... Um, it had a good light frost rating on the package, but I think Handprint said that the pigment they use is not the best. Again, I will do a full review on that. We'll look at all the color swatches. I'm just playing around with it right now. I uh, honestly, I have to do some recording um, in front of the camera, but I'm waiting for my hair to dry. I just didn't want to go through the ordeal of blow drying it. It's such a, it's such an ordeal. It takes forever <laughs> to blow dry. It's funny um, because you probably realize I color my hair, and. Uh, and it makes your hair more porous. And I recently found out that synthetic brushes, the reason, the difference between a white synthetic brush and like a golden is just, it's the same stuff except the golden or the brown synthetic brushes have been colored. And as you color them, it makes them more porous because it pits the, uh, the shaft of the, um, of the brush and that's what makes it more porous and that's why it holds more water. So that's why the, uh, the colored synthetic brushes um, behave better. So I thought that was really interesting because I didn't know that. So now I'm going to grab some more tree colors here. This lovely red. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's interesting. That's probably why, like, the water brushes that have the white hairs don't tend to, like, like, that water slides right off of them and they don't hold as much uh, as, like, our. Mimics and Zens and things like that do. Plus, I mean, they've probably been extra treated to, to act that way. Now, yellow paints tend to be more opaque, so I can go in here and dab on yellow branches even on top of those dark greens because um, if it settles on top of the paper, it's going to, it's still going to show up. That's something about yellow, especially cadmium yellow like I'm using here and the cad reds, those are just more opaque and they are going to, I'm going to stand out better for us. So kind of keep that in mind when using like uh, transparent watercolor is that you can get some opaque effects if you use the pigments that tend to be larger and more opaque. Even though they're still considered transparent watercolors, um, they're going to have those characteristics. The, the downside to that, and you might think, well, we just use those all the time, is because sometimes opaque colors, well, opaque colors usually tend to be a little muddier. So you just want to keep that in mind. I'm 
a few more grasses. And I want to do a little bit more with my reflections. And I think I'm going to want to add, um, I'm just going to, I'm basically just kind of going in and adding little, little details. I'm noticing my tree here. I, I do want a, some, some more texture on the bark. I'm just going to dab a little bit of that in. Um, I want some more reflections. You can mix up small amounts with your, uh, with your dagger. Don't, don't be too rough with them though. They're just, especially these uh, Neptunes, um, are very, very thirsty brushes. They're very uh, floppy brushes, so you don't want to damage them. And uh, you just want to make sure that you are, you're careful with them. I'm going in, adding uh, some ripples in the water. It's a good idea to darken up the bottoms of the rocks too, so they have a little bit of a uh, little bit of weight. Like you're seeing where the water is wet on the edge of the rocks, are going to be a little bit darker there. She can also go in and add your ripples that way. I'm going to take some of that ultramarine blue because I have used that. And I am going to throw some ripples of the blue in there just to really give it the watery look. And plus it's going to make our um, orange in our painting stand out a little bit more. It was such a beautiful day Saturday out on the kayaks. We spent like two hours out on Fields Pond. It was just so nice and it's right on an Audubon um, borders an Audubon sanctuary so there were so many birds we got really close to a loon in the kayaks and we startled a bunch of ducks and they flew out of the thicket because there was an area where you could go through and I thought we could actually go to a nearby lake but it was the the water was too low uh, but we were able to go kind of through these thickets and um and we startled some ducks and it was just so neat to see them fly up uh really really beautiful and I think maybe just a few little branches just on their own. I'm gonna do it with this with this uh, dagger striper. You can do like really tall, uh, long branches without having to reload because it holds these tapered bristles come to a point and they hold so much. And you can even add a little bit into the water. This would have been a fun one to paint uh, on location. You can see we're not spending a ton of time. We're taking our time and enjoying it, but it really doesn't take a long time to do this. And I hope you give it a try. Um, like I said, when I post this on my blog, it will be a couple, couple days after it comes out on YouTube. I will have the reference photo there so you can check it out and uh, have something to go by. I'm going to... Uh, drag that out a little bit because it's a little too uh a little too splotchy do a little bit over there too and remember anything i feel like i'm stuttering and stumbling on my words i'm sorry um and anything you do in the uh above the horizon line you can repeat in the water area as well so have fun practice reflections it's just a piece of paper, guys. There's nothing to worry about here. Play with it until you're happy with it. You either have, you, you never fail. You either succeed or you learn one or the other. So, um, so have fun with it and enjoy the process. I hope you found this helpful and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I will have a full tutorial on the Yarka watercolors coming up, but for now, at least you got to see them in action. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and share this with any of your artsy friends that would enjoy it. Until next time, happy crafting.